Hello! Today we're going to be recording some journal entries related to obtaining assets that require us to think about the cost principle. If you aren't familiar with the cost principle, it states that we should record assets in the accounting records at the total cost necessary to prepare the asset for use. So keep that in mind as we go through these problems. So looking at the first piece of information, it says that on January 1st, 2010, Eddie Haskell's used cars purchased a parcel of land with a dilapidated old building for a purchase price of $230,000 cash. The company intends to demolish the old building, construct a new building and parking lot, and use the site for a used car dealership. The company incurs closing cost of $4,000. We are asked to prepare the journal entry to record the purchase of the real estate, including the closing costs on January 1st, 2010. Now there are a few things we should discuss here. First, note that the company doesn't want the old building, and they plan on demolishing it soon. Therefore, there's no reason to separately list the building in our journal entry. Essentially, the company is purchasing land with an unwanted building included. Secondly, if we remember the cost principle, which states that we should record assets at the total cost necessary to prepare them for use, we should notice that the $4,000 closing costs are part of the cost of obtaining the land. So therefore, we should add that cost to the $230,000 purchase price of the land. That gives us a total land cost of $234,000. So our journal entry ends up looking like a debit to land for $234,000. And of course, we're paying cash for that, so we will credit cash also for $234,000. So next we can move on to the second part of this problem which states that on January 4th, 2010, the company pays a contractor to demolish the old building, to clear and grade the land, to construct a new building, and to install a parking lot. The cost to demolish the building was $25,000. The cost to clear and grade the land was $15,000. The cost to construct the new building was $157,000, and the cost to install the parking lot was $95,000. A check for $292,000 was written to compensate the contractor for this work. So we are asked to prepare the journal entry to record the payment to the contractor on January 4th, 2010. So if you were to add up these different amounts here, you would see that they would total to the $292,000 that we are compensating the contractor for this work. So thinking about the cost principle, let's think about each of these different numbers one at a time. So first we have the cost to demolish the building, which was $25,000. Well, remember, we didn't want that building there in the first place, and this is really part of the cost of getting that land ready to use. So that has to be part of the cost of the land. So what you could do is you could go over here and you could debit land to increase our land by $25,000 for that demolishing of the building, because that's getting the land ready to use. Next, we had a cost to clear and grade the land was an additional $15,000. So of course that's going to be another cost related to getting the land ready to use. So we can add that on to the $25,000 we already have there. So $25,000 plus $15,000 equals $40,000. So we can change that number. Next we have the cost to construct the new building was $157,000. So we are going to be using this building so we should record this one. That's for $157,000. And then we have the cost to install a parking lot for $95,000. Now we're not going to use parking lot here. Instead, we're going to use land improvements. And land improvements is an account that just records any additions to land that include things such as a driveway, a parking lot, lighting fixtures, or even something like a sprinkling system. Anything that you're adding on to your land. So in this case, that's going to be for $95,000. And then finally, of course, we wrote a check for $292,000 to compensate the contractor for this work. So that's going to be a payment in cash for $292,000. All right, we are finished with our journal entries. Always remember that the cost principle requires us to record assets at the total cost required to get an asset ready for use, and you should be ready to prepare any asset acquisition journal entries.